morning. Um, my name is Katherine Sobieszczyk and I'm out here at the Butterfly Learning Center, which is right here uh, with the Phil Harburger Park Conservancy. Um, and today we're going to be following the journey of the monarch butterfly. Uh, I've designed this outdoor game that I would like very much for all educators and, and families who would like to play it either virtually online or you can download it yourself and um, and hang it up to, to be able to have friends and family follow the journey like we're going to today. So in real life, our, our butterflies are passing through San Antonio, Texas right now. Um, we are a monarch champion city um, and a lot of the things that are in the outdoor game are the same things that we are encouraging families to do um, to help support the monarch butterfly in their journey to Mexico. Um, so I have a map here that I put really bright red arrows to, sh to show just about when our students here in San Antonio are starting school, the monarchs are starting to migrate from the northern portions of the United States. And we're following just the central corridor, although there are monarch um, pathways that are in other portions of the United States. So in August, they uh, the, the monarch will begin their journey um, year to year. It might vary slightly, but as the months go on, they're making their way down. Um, and right now, mid-October tends to be a big time for monarchs to be passing through on their way to Mexico. Um, and that's where they'll spend the winter. The game today, we're gonna first follow the journey taking a, a geography perspective. And so the first thing we'll do is we're gonna use a wristband that has a bookmark on one side. And on the other side it are playing pieces for the game. So I have my volunteer here today. I'm gonna to go ahead and put a, um, a wristband on Caroline. And we are going to um, play the game and follow that monarch journey. I do have some large paper wings that um, students can make pretty easily with some paper um, and decorate. But, and so for today, we're gonna begin our journey right over here at station number one. Here begins the journey of the monarch in late August or early September. Luckily, there's a large refuge in Minnesota with plenty of nectar plants to store up energy. These fall monarchs store energy as fat in the abdomen. So it says in orange here, raise a frostweed. Frostweed is a fantastic nectar plant, particularly for our area. It's really the primary nectar source. So on Caroline's wristband here, we have a little frostweed. And so she's gonna raise a frostweed to signify that we're planting a frostweed. And we're in the game, we're gonna flex our muscles because nectar gives us lots of energy to make that monarch journey and it's telling us to power over to number five. Let's go. All right, here it's the beginning of September. School has started and the Monarch are moving south through Iowa and Nebraska. Just keep flying, just keep flying and raise two adult Monarchs. So we have those Monarchs that are gonna be developing and fueling up to take that journey. So on Caroline's wristband, we're raising two Monarchs. So, yep, those are monarchs. We've got a male and a female there. We can go ahead and raise both. One and two. And it says for us to flap our forearms four times and go ahead four stops to number nine. All right, flying over to nine. Okay. Oh no! Say no to neonicotoids. These are pesticides injected into seed and plants, so plants grow pest free. But they are deadly to pollinators. Set down a monarch. Um, oftentimes, if we can find signs that will show us that plants might have these neonicotoids, and um, a lot of the local nurseries are gonna be more sensitive to that. It's also a good idea to be staying with native, mon uh, mati native milkweeds, which um, uh, oftentimes are going to not have, um, are not at the mainstay um, places to find uh, plants, but they're out there and available. Just make sure you're asking and looking closely. 
Um, so what we're gonna do is we've set down that monarch and now we're gonna jump up and down five times and we're gonna move along to number 14 in our journey. As we are um, trying to prepare for, for monarch butterflies, it's time to plant those native perennials. Native perennials serve as nectar plants and host plants to pollinators. Fall is a great time to establish plants in the ground. Native plants can handle the weather changes in Texas better than other plants. Raise a monarch butterfly. And it, a lot of our milkweeds and our nectar plants can, if you don't have a yard to plant them in, you can also plant them in pots. There's lots of ways to help support the monarch butterfly and other pollinators too. We're gonna move slowly four stops to number 18. All right. So during September, monarchs fly through Kansas and Missouri. Hopefully there are no mozones and lots of wildflowers for nectar. A no mozone just means that they don't mow down the grasses so that lots of the native uh, flowers can, can bloom and grow um, and provide habitat and nectar as fuel for those monarchs. Um, so we're going to be steering our way through so you're making steering motions and you're raising a milkweed to fly south to number 20. Alright, caution! It's a spider web! There are so many predators. The monarch was not so lucky. Take two deep breaths. And second breath. Set a monarch to rest and move along to number 27. maps there's those invisible lines of latitude that run across east to west and longitude that are going to run north to south and we can actually predict more or less where the monarch will be migrating through um, paying attention year after year about where we're able to where we're sighting them and seeing them I know one place that you guys can make sure to to note when you're seeing monarchs is and uh, a citizen science app called iNaturalist. Um, iNaturalist.org is a great place to make sure that um, families and um, students are, are able to show uh, when they're seeing uh, wildlife out and so that researchers can build um, ways to protect them. Just like we're seeing here, we have take a look at when monarchs will be near the city of San Antonio. So San Antonio is at latitude 29.4 and longitude 98.4. And so what we're looking for here is the latitude lines. And we're going to come down here on our table to number 20, latitude 29. And we're moving across to, look at that, October 18th. Okay, historically speaking, between October 10th and 22nd, we can expect the peak in monarch abundance. So that means that we're seeing the most of the monarch population moving through San Antonio during that time, which is right now. So we get to raise a monarch, Caroline. We're gonna jump as high as you can and move ahead to number 32. So here we are at number 32, which, um, the mayor's, the mayor's monarch pledge solidifies our dedication in maintaining and restoring habitat for the monarch butterfly while encouraging our citizens to do the same. It is important to protect habitats for our local pollinators, maintaining the ecosystem and quality of life. That's from Mayor Ron Nuremberg. And it's almost the end of October. Actually, it's about mid-October right now. And you've just arrived as a monarch butterfly in San Antonio. Luckily, this city has no mow zones, and plants plenty of milkweed. So we're gonna raise a monarch larva. So you can see that the larva is um, our caterpillar. And so Caroline, on your wristband, you're gonna raise a larva this time, and you're gonna get to do a dance move as you go to 36. All right. <laughs> we're going to 36. All right. Do you know what triggers the monarch migration in fall? Scientists aren't 
entirely sure how monarchs know where to go. Most likely, it's a combination of directional aids, such as the magnetic pull of Earth and positioning of the sun. Tap your wrist two times. You're gonna raise a monarch and we're gonna move to number 38. And you can see here's another map where we've arrived to Mexico. It's, and the longest recorded flight for a monarch was one tagged in Nova Scotia and recovered in central Mes Mexico, a distance of 2,690 miles. That's 4,200 um, kilometers. Our game is over, but we can still keep learning about the monarch butterfly. There's three other journeys that you can join us for later on. Thank you.